Okay. Wait, 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 wait. We're not starting from there. We're not starting from there. We're using our safe state. Literally where we left off last time. There we go. Okay. Hey, that's better. So, let's talk about what happened. So, last time, use the 3DS one. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit in my ears, though it's a little bit loud. Let me open the sound over there. Come over here. Jesus. Okay, sorry about that. Alright, start from now. <laughs> Cut all that out. Cut that bit out where I did the sound. Um, so I played the 3DS version the last day. And let me update the name as well. Jesus, I'm forgetting to do everything here. Um, the Dongo's Cavern. Lovely. Um, it's not 3D either. It is just the usual. Oh, I should have done all this admin before I started. Ocarina of Time. Oh, we're getting attacked. We're getting attacked. Hang on. There we go. Ocarina of Time. So, just in summary, we played the 3DS version the last day, right? Didn't go super well. Um, why is that border coming back? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why go vault? There we go. Okay. Um, played the 3DS version the last day. Slow down everywhere. Um, a bit of a pain to play. I'm sure even worse to watch. So I'm playing now the 64 version with a texture pack that is hopefully going. It's it's a, it's a specifically a 3DS texture pack. So it's hopefully going to emulate a little bit more the look of the 3DS version. But um, unfortunately, a lot of the quality of life improvements that came with the 3DS version are not going to be present. So we're going to have very slow text. Um, but on the positive side, I did literally, like I say, replay that first hour right up to the point where we left off um, after meeting Zelda. So we have uh, the slingshot with the bigger bag, probably not the same amount of rupees and all, or Deku sticks. I wasn't really looking into all that. But generally speaking, we should be more or less at exactly the same spot. I'm, I'm even standing outside Hyrule Castle like we were. Um, so the goal for today is Dodongo's Cavern. We want to get the, um, uh, I forget what the name of the Ruby, the Goron Ruby. So we're going to do a little, a few little bits and pieces before that. Just get a few, um, I think I can get a piece of heart. Definitely can get the Sun Song I want to get as well. Hylian Shield. God, that's going to get a few sculptures maybe. But yeah, we're going to do a, a few little bits and pieces before we start. It's, it's night time now. So what will I do first? Yeah, I'll probably go over to the village. Um, do that. I'm also playing on a different controller now. I'm now playing on the Xbox controller where I was using PS4 before. Uh, for whatever reason, the... The N64 emulator did not like the PlayStation controller. I couldn't get it to work, but I have a wired Xbox 360 controller, so that will do the job just as well. Also, hopefully, there'll be no slowdown with this. I didn't experience any during my testing, but it's very possible that there, with the texture pack, there might be some, but hopefully not. Um, anyway, this is Kokiri. Ooh, Kokiri, Jesus. Uh, Kakariko Village. This is your little... Your little village area. One of my favorite areas in the game. Also, one thing, by the way, that I ex experienced while I was playing as well, I don't know if it's related to the um, texture pack as well, is some crackling on the audio. Now, I've, I've had a look and done some troubleshooting, and hopefully that should be resolved. But, who knows? Right, anyway. This is the very scary graveyard. Uh, I think I'm going to get the song before I do anything else, because that's going to be very helpful for uh, getting the other bits and bobs. 
so here we go. So here we need to play the song. You'll notice the HUD is different as well. Um, we don't have the second screen anymore because obviously we're not playing the 3DS version anymore. But um, it is what it is. Yeah, that texture pack looks great, by the way. For people who haven't seen the 64 version, it looks way better. The text is all sharp. Um, the button mappings on the hood look great as well. And various textures have been improved because you know, as, a, as a whatever 25 year old Nintendo 64 game, it does not look great by uh, modern standards. But with the texture pack, it looks much better than it would uh, by default. That being said, um, Market Town, uh, beside Harold Castle, where we went to beat Zelda, it looks terrible. Uh, and also, I keep pressing now the wrong button for my sword with this new controller. So hopefully, we won't have too much of that today. But um, because the um, oh, it's so funky! Come on. Wait, where's the uh? There we go. Where's the source of fire I need to use here to light those? Is there one? What am I using here? I am confused already by this game that I've beaten multiple times. I don't have an item to use, right? What's it telling me here? Yes. I'm pretty sure I was supposed to be able to do this already, though. Oh, hang on a bloody second. There we go, I was only supposed to be all the enemies. But there's obviously two on the torches there that you're supposed to light. Maybe I can do that later when I have Din's fire and whatnot. Now here's some real spooky enemies in here. Look at these boys. They are very, very spooky. So I'm going to try and avoid those for now. Because they pretty much grab onto you and kill you real bad. Right, so here's where we learn the song. This needs to be a little bit further away than that. Or check it. Ready to check it? Yeah, here we go. You'll notice again how slowly the text moves across the screen. Oh my god, it is painful. And I can hear some crackling in my ears now while this is playing. So hopefully it's not too bad to endure. I don't know why it's happening. I've looked up troubleshooting steps for it and I've done them. And it is what it is. So that sun song is going to be very helpful for uh, killing these re-deads now. As that little skull told us a second ago. And I'll be able to play it and then chop them up real good. I have the C6 mapped to the uh, right thumbstick now as well. So whereas before I could only basically use the two uh, items at a time, now I can use three, so that's going to be a bit more helpful. Even though the 3DS version really lets you use four, uh, I really wasn't using two of those because they were on the touch screen. So I really wasn't bothered with that. See, now we got all them re it's all dead. Perfect. Okie dokie. So we're making some headway now. We're sucking these. Um, in other news, I got my uh, Indiegogo Nintendo magazine delivered to me there today. Um, it's, <laughs> funnily enough, it is a special edition Legend of Zelda anniversary one, so it has lots of cool Zelda art in it and whatnot. What? Don't be giving me grief. Let me pull this. Who is saying that? Is there a little boy here? I know, well, I know there is one. But he's all the way down there! Why does he care what I'm doing up here? 
Alright, well I know that one of these has a Hylian shield in it, which I surely is not going to give me too much grief about it. It's this one here. Alright, maybe I need to do it at night time. Okay, oh, I'll play the sun song. That'll make it, that'll make it night time immediately. And that's the advantage of the sun's song. That's what it does. Turns uh, day to night and vice versa. There we go. Okay, so hopefully now I'm going to be able to pull those graveyards back and he's not going to give me any trouble. Oh, there's a sculpture as well, but I can't get it because it's up on a wall. And I don't have the item yet that would let me uh, go and retrieve it. So there should be a piece of heart down here, I believe. I'll just show you guys as well at some point my um, guide that I have, which I'm not using, but uh, that I own. God. Um, I have a hardcover Ocarina of Time Prima uh, Collector's Edition Guide for Ocarina of Time, and it is beautiful. Jeez, let me get a few hits on this guy before he wakes back up. Good lord. Yeah, and that um, that guide is part of a box set and is only available with the box set. So it goes for a pretty penny on the old Amazon these days. But I would not sell it because I love it. But if I ever get stuck, rather than looking on, um, I don't know, a guide online, I'll just get to the old physical guide out and have a look. There's a piece of heart. Lovely job. Four of those. Get me another heart container. And then we need to get the shield. Which you'll uh, notice is too big. And I've never actually liked having it as a child because it looks ridiculous. It's basically the length of his body. But uh, we're going to need it for the dungeon that we're going to do because it's a fire dungeon and that wooden shield I have is very susceptible to uh, catching fire and then you have no shield. So there's the hiding shield now, which I'm going to equip. There we go. And look how big it is. Ridiculous. But we do need it, so it's fine. It looks much cooler later on when, uh, when you grow a bit bigger. Okay, so that's all we can do now in the graveyard. I'm going to go to Kakariko Village again now because I think at night time there's some sculptures around that I can get. And then I'm going to do the cuckoo, the cuckoo uh, hunt to get a bottle as well. I'm not hearing uh, sculpture noises. There is one of them though. How many do we have now? That should be... Five, right, we got the uh, we got the three in the tr in the Deku tree, and we got the one by the castle. So that should be five. Is there one in this tree? Am I misremembering it? No. There is. Something. So I'm not really fussed about getting all the sculptures, like I said, but there is a reward for getting is it ten? The first ten we get a wallet upgrade. So I do wanna I do wanna get that. Pretty sure one of them is in a box somewhere around here. Not that one. Up here maybe. Oh well there's one here, it's not a box. And then I know there's one uh, by the marketplace that we maybe should have picked up earlier, but I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to get it, so. Such is life. See, I don't want to be collecting too many rupees either, because I think I have a limit of about 99 at the moment, which is a bit of a pain. But anyway. Um, this, did I get, the, I didn't get one in the box already, did I? Maybe I did. Did I already get one in the box? I've not seen where this one would be. Oh, this one up here as well. Where are you? There. Okay. 
Let's just check how many I have. What's that, seven or eight? Seven. I don't think there should be one, the, one in a box somewhere. But well, I think I've got all the boxes now, so I can't imagine where it would, where where it would be. I'm not gonna go into any of those houses because I don't think there's much to do in them at the moment. But I will make it daytime because I want to do that. Coco game. Get a bottle. She just tells you, my cuckoos have escaped. Get them back, please. So there's one. I forget how many I'm supposed to collect, but it's not a huge amount. There's one there, which I'll come back to, because I need another one. I know there's one by the entrance, so I'll get that one. And that'll be my, uh, my special one that I'll use for getting the other ones. That shield texture looks real good, by the way. <laughs> Even though I know I just said it looks a bit weird. Texture-wise, it looks really nice. Okay, so these are very useful for uh, floating about the level with. So I'm going to use that right on this point. You are going to go straight back into that pen. This one... I'm gonna need again. We're getting to it. That one up there. By the, uh. Windmill. Ooh, can I go in the windmill yet? I wonder. Thank you very much. I'm actually not sure if I can go in the windmill and learn the learn the song in there yet. Storyline-wise, I think I probably can. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Because you learn that as an adult, not as a child. Alright, so we're good. Doing well with these, uh, these chickens. Just need to get a few more of them. You go in there. Thanks very much. Oh, maybe one of these in a box. Maybe that's what I was thinking of, rather than the sculptures. Okay, let's see if we can find where that other one went that I threw out. He didn't go all the way back up there, did he? No. I think there might be one in a box here. Okay, that's what I was thinking of when I was thinking of the, uh... Sculptures. And then I just need to find one more after this. And we are happy. Where did that other one go? Let's scope out from high... High place here. Is he just down here? Yeah, by the... well, there we go. I think that might well be all of them. Is there one more somewhere? Up by the Death Mountain entrance, maybe? Not sure. Yeah, must be. She's not reacting. <laughs> I don't think there's one up here, but I'll check while I'm passing by. No. I think it's up by the Death Mountain entrance. We can hear... You know, that they get louder as we get closer to them. So I think there must be one up here. Although I'm not hearing any. Oh, now I am. Yeah, there we go. There we go. The 
and then this will give us our first bottle of me. Good lord. Can it be skipped? No! Why would you want to skip it? Right. Uh, I'm going to go to the market now to get that sculpture that I'm missing. Is there anything else I can do there? I'm not doing the shooting games. Shooting gallery, like I said. Anywhere else I can go. Lon Lon Ranch. Gerudo Valley. Is there anything really to do there? I'll go land on ranch, but I don't think there's much to do. Off the top of my head. <laughs> we'll get some rupees as well in this room. This room where I'm gonna go is where you go to farm rupees, basically. When I did my 100% playthrough there the other year, for shooting gallery games and the like, this is where you come to get, get your rupees to play. Smash all these pots. Uh, I think you used to get a red rupee in here sometimes, which is worth 20. Uh, I also saw um, a separate guide that I own for the NES Zelda game, uh, hand-drawn guides by Phil Summers. I saw that today going on eBay for 100 Europeans. So if I ever need her, uh, you know, money urgently, I can start selling my Zelda books. Of which I own too many anyway. Um, Alright, let's get this sculpture or wherever it is. It's behind one of these boxes. Must be the other one. So that's what I wanted to get in here. We now have like 50 rupees. Which if you don't get the high end shield um, in the graveyard, that costs 50 rupees to buy. So rather than buy it, you can just get it for free. Okie dokie, let's go to London Ranch over here. Is there much I could do in here? I think there's maybe the find the uh, chicken game. For a piece of heart, maybe? Oh, I don't think there's anything. Oh, I know there's certainly another piece of heart I can get. Maybe two pieces of heart in here? I don't think there's much else than that. I'm not going to do the grave digging piece of heart either, because that is a complete waste of time and money. And I'd be here for an hour doing it. It's painful. Hello, whoever's there. Thanks for popping in. Okie dokie. So let's go and get we won't go in just yet. We'll just go get the piece of heart straight away. Um, yeah, and I'm reading quite a good Zelda book at the moment, which I don't know if, if anyone watching is interested in reading more about Zelda. There is a good publishing company called Third Editions who do two Zelda books. One of them, which is about the history of the series, and another one which is like specifically about uh, Breath of the Wild and development of Breath of the Wild and they're both really good. I think they're French originally, but the books are translated into English so you can just buy the English uh, copies. I have them on the bookshelf behind me and they're like really, first of all, really good books, but also like they're hard back and the quality of the books themselves is really great. Um, so you can either buy it from the uh, the publisher themselves. I think they have like a website you can get it from, or you can. What am I doing here? Uh, or you can buy. I, I've seen. I've seen it on like Amazon and eBay. Um. Why have I like completely forgotten how to do this? Uh. <laughs> right. Let's do this little puzzle here. What way do I need to push? Push or pull these? Okay. Maybe I can push this in. Yes. Okay, now we're now we're going. 
But yeah, I'm, I'm reading at the moment the Breath of the Wild book, which is the second one in their, in their series. And they do books about all different video games, not only, um, not only Zelda. Um, and their books are, are really good. Highly recommended. Okay, so here we go. So this is going to get us a piece of heart once I go into this little hole here. And then... I think I can go play a mini game. I think that's going to get me another piece of heart. There we go. Happy days. Yeah, this texture pack is looking really good. Really, really good. Because I know when you play a remaster of a game, uh, it's not really the case with Ocarina of Time 3DS, but when you when you play a remaster of a game, uh, I think the biggest compliment you can give it is, this just looks like how the old one looked. And it's like, well, yeah, it, it looks like how you remember it looking in your kind of idealized nostalgia. Um, but playing Ocarina of Time in its original form, especially on any kind of high definition screen, uh, is not <laughs> is not a pleasant experience. So when you're playing with a texture pack, it, it just makes it a bit more palatable. Um, that was definitely the case recently where I was playing through the Paper Mario series uh, from the very beginning again. And I played the f first one, which I own on, you know, Nintendo 64. Uh, I, the text was like blurry, it just didn't look good at all. So I, I ended up buying it also on the Wii U Virtual Store and playing it on that. Just made it you know, easier to look at. Uh, for whatever reason, the cables, etc., that I have for playing Nintendo 64 on my modern TV like doesn't look good at all, especially if the game you're playing, like Ocarina of Time, like Paper Mario, is a very text-heavy game. Like, it's fine for playing Mario 64, um, and the like, but uh, I wouldn't play this on, on it at all. Okay, so let's try and find this guy's three special birds. That's not it. Now there is a trick you can do for this one, which I did not do. Which is, you can, before you start playing, you can basically trap all the, uh, all the birds behind him. And, uh, so the three that he throw out, they're the only three, basically. Oh, we need to get one in the last second. Oh, and he does it. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Yeah, uh, I'll marry my marry her, sure. So you can see, for example, with the texture pack, the text here is super clear. Looks really good. It does the it definitely does not look like that on the uh, on the sixty four. And I get no, I don't get a piece of hair. I get a bottle. So I have two bottles now. Tremendous. So how are we looking so far? Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. That's pretty much all I'm going to do in London Ranch for now. Uh, I'm going to roll into the wall there. Is there anything in Gerudo Valley that I can do right now? I usually leave Gerudo Valley till much later. Not really sure if there's anything. Oh! Woody! My good friend. Yeah, we're playing Ocarina of Time, Woody. Um, if any, if you guys haven't seen the first part, by the way, of this, uh, it's on the Twitch VOD. I also set up a YouTube channel where I'm putting all of the uh, videos. Uh, you can find the link to that on my Twitter, which is the same URL as the Twitch channel itself, Paul Griffin CSP. So please subscribe, not only to... Uh, not only to me here on Twitch, but also on the YouTube. Uh, I didn't listen to what you said, and I don't want to hear it. You're the worst character in the game. <laughs> the most annoying. Right, so let's go in here and see what's up. Ooh, especially that it's nighttime. Like, I forget as well. 
Like, I, all I'm thinking in my mind is, I'm going into Gerudo Valley. What am I gonna get? I'm gonna get something, I'm not gonna get something. I forget about the night day cycle. And of course, going there at night time, going there in the day is gonna affect uh, what's available and what I can do. But I have the Sun Song, so, you know, worst case scenario. We'll see. It'll be fine. And also, the music in here is mm, banging. That <laughs> makes me think of the uh, Nirvana, the band We Shop Wednesday. That bossa nova beat. Mm. I'm doing much better this time for not swearing as well. Which I was gonna swear there when I referenced Nirvana the band, but luckily I didn't. Okay, let me just see. I think maybe there's like a ledge with a piece of heart that I can maybe get. See, now I don't know if I'm, th if I'm thinking of Twilight Princess. <laughs> Alright, let's go try and go to that crate over there and see if that's gonna give us something, because I don't I really think there's nothing else I can do here. At the moment. I might be better off jumping from the higher ledge. Let's see if we can make it. It's gonna be tight. Okay, we're good. We are good. I feel it's going to be sculpture. <laughs> no, peace of heart. Tremendous. Tremendous. Okay, this is going to bring us to Lake Hylia, and then we're going to head... Uh, we're going to head back to uh, Kakariko Village, and then up to Goron City. Because as you see in the title, the goal today is we're going to beat the Dongo's Cavern, and we're going to get that Goron Ruby. Now at night time there's a sculpture on the side of the house, but I'm not. Oh, or is it when I'm when I'm older? Let's try it. Uh, that owl is there. I saw him in the distance as well. I'm not going over to him for him to talk me ear off. But let's see if that sculpture is there at night time. Ooh, it might not be since I just. Oh, it's it's there, but I can't get it. I don't have the hook shot yet. Excuse me, or more specifically, the boomerang. Which is going to let me get a lot of these child link uh, gizmos. Alright, now we start the long walk back to the village across Hyrule Field. Oh, that owl is there again! Good lord, why is he everywhere? <laughs> Can I skip past him here without him noticing me? I can. Lovely. Good, good music, but he just talks and talks and talks. And ain't nobody got time for that. So here we go. We're doing for time. 33 minutes already. So realistically, getting up Death Mountain is not going to take super long. I'll get a piece of heart there as well. Um, into Goron Sea. Can probably get a piece of heart in there as well. Do the dungeon. It's not a super big dungeon, so it shouldn't take too long. And beat the boss. And then I'm not looking forward to doing... Jabu Jabu in the next stream, but must be done. Because Lord Jabu Jabu's belly is one of those dungeons that games have where it's an escort quest and you have to carry another character around and they don't help. And it's very, very annoying. Luckily, the dungeon itself is pretty short, but even so, it's a pain. Right, that's Death Mountain in the distance there, on the right hand side. That is where we're going. That is where we're off to. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Ah, music is so good in this game. So, so good. 
I was very lucky to uh, attend a Zelda Symphony concert. Why am I going down there? Jeez. Here in Dublin. God, how many years ago was that? Many years ago. And it was great. Loved it. And if they came back, I would go in a heartbeat. But anyway, it's Ocarina of Time for now. Which, mm, does it have the best music of any Zelda game? I'd say it's probably gotta be up there, doesn't it? I mean, everyone loves Skyward Sword at the moment, which... Don't, uh... <laughs> that was a Guitar Hero mic, Woody. It was not a rock band mic, but the sentiment is correct for sure. Yeah, the mic stand's pretty good. Um, For the podcast, I've completely forgotten where I'm going. I just I was talking to you and I forgot what I was doing. Yeah, the... um. The podcast, I used to use um, a mixing, a little mixing, whatever you call it, table, a mixer, basically. And I would use a headphone, headphones with that, with a mic on it. But then we started using a new, and the reason I was using that, sorry, was um, because I had to record my audio and Barry and Joe's audio as well. So I would use um, the mixer to capture all the audio. Uh, because my computer didn't allow me to record from the sound card, which some, some PCs don't, which is a bit annoying. But, um, we moved to a new website, basically, called um, Zencaster, which does all the recording for you, and let, like lets you download separate MP3 tracks and everything. So I didn't really need to use the mixer anymore, and so that allowed me to buy a proper microphone which is the one that's here. It's a Yeti Nano, which is the same one Joe uses. Um, but I don't have a huge amount of table space. So what I, I had a little stand for it, which is over here. Sorry. This is a stand for it here. And I would stand it on the table and I'd have to lean forward. No, it is free. It's I haven't paid a single cent. Um, but I had to lean forward and it just wasn't good for the old backaroo. So I bought this um, this arm off Amazon for like five euro, which it looks great, but it's it's cheap tat. Uh, and the benefit of it is, this is actually my bed that I'm sitting on right now. Um, when I'm at work, I can do uh, meetings with my camera off lying on my bed with using the mic. Okay, so we're going up Death Mountain anyway. We are gonna do... Uh, we're gonna get a piece of heart, which is up at, on top of where the Dongor's Cavern is. And I'm gonna use a sneaky trick to get it. And then we're gonna go to go Goron City and do the stuff there. Um, so there's a piece of heart, we can see it, right? So what you're supposed to do is once you blow this boulder up, there's a little... Um, what's it called? A little plot for you to put your magic bean in. And then when you're an adult, that grows into the big bean that you can ride to the top of the cavern. But we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do it the sneaky way. Which is, we're going to go to the top and we're going to backflip. Backflip off it. And land on top of the cavern. And get that piece of heart earlier than we're supposed to. Okay, we can actually not go up that way yet. I don't know where I'm going. We're going this way. Okay, so this is the entrance to Goron City. We're going to go over here to where this uh, bomb flower is. Now, we can't grab that yet because we don't have the required goodies, right? But what we can do is, and hopefully I'll land this. No, I don't want to grab it, please. Do I have to maybe go in and get the... Uh... Yeah, I think I need to go get the... Uh... Or embrace it first. It's not letting me backflip because it keeps grabbing the flower. So I need to get rid of that flower before I do it. But no, Zencaster Woody is very free uh, for the moment. I think I think it is paid, but during COVID they made it free. Look, if they make me pay for it, I'll pay for it. It's like super super useful as far as recording podcasts goes. Um, all you need to do is have however many people like you as the creator. Um, set up the, the, the recording, set up the link, you send the link to the people that you want to join, and um, 
and then you just it's like a skype call and then at the end it gives you the mp3s to download and you have three separate mp3s for everyone's uh vocal recording and it sounds great and then you just whack them into audacity and do your do your business on it basically so it makes my life a lot easier um less risky as well than recording it live into audacity which is what we're doing because god knows audacity could just corrupt like which we, we actually did once lose an episode in in the 10 years we've been doing it we've lost one episode and what happened was um i didn't realize at the time but in audacity if you um have only a certain amount of disk space left on your c drive it will do the entire recording right but if you try to export it or save it uh it gives you an error message and says that you, you basically can't because there's not enough disk space um or in fact i think what might have happened was it looked like it was recording the whole time and then once i stopped recording it had actually lost a huge amount of the data because it, it couldn't keep recording it so it, it looked like the zigzags were still going across the audacity recording but it was like lost there's nothing i could do to get it back what do you want oh I, I never went back to this area i don't actually have her song <laughs> crap i completely forgot about that oh well so we have oh we actually don't have a considerable trek ahead of us because i forgot there is a shortcut from Goron Sea that goes directly to the forest, so we're going to use that instead. Uh, if I remember where it is, it's in one of these little. Yeah, this is it here. Well, I can't throw this. Can I not blow these up with. Jesus, how do you get the where do you get the Goron bracelet from? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I figured you could just like knock these with your thing and they would go out. But apparently not. This lad doesn't give it to me, does he? Where do you get the Goron bracelet? Uh oh. Uh oh, we're gonna have to work this out now. Because okay. Don't tell me I actually have to manually go all the way back. I guess I do. Because I'm thinking that Darunia gives you the bracelet after you play the song form, which allows you to go into a uh, cavern. Oh, what a pain. Why are you designed this way, stupid game? Okay, I mean, luckily the game world's not enormous, but that's still very inconvenient. Oh well, such is life. It's going to add an extra, god, 20 minutes onto our playtime here. And I can't even backflip down there to make it quicker. Oh my god. Oh well. Also, it doesn't let you, like, jump off the cliff here, just down to your side. After a point, it just, like, warps you back up, which is very annoying. Oh, I'm a bit sad that we're not playing the 3DS version anymore. Um, and I say that because, you know, I've, I've beaten the 64 version of Ocarina of Time many times. And I've actually never beaten the 3DS version. Uh, and, you know, like, visually... It was going to be a little bit different. That that was kind of my interest in doing it at all. Because I beat, I, like I said, I've beaten this version. I think two years ago, 100% completely. And so I didn't really have um, much uh, incentive to be like, let's get Ocarina of Time, the 64 version, out again and give it a crack. And I was like, I beat it. I don't. Know about it. I could go a decade without playing that game again. But the 3DS version, you know, less so. But, um, God, the slowdown was so bad that, in that first video. Could not play it. Maybe I'll... You know, I still have it, obviously. Maybe I'll, I'll beat it in my own time. But, uh... 
this is modded. Ooh, uh, Neil, you are 100% correct. What I did was, um, I was playing the 3DS version, emulated, the last day. And don't worry, Neil, I, I do own both the 3DS version and the 64 version. I own both of them. So I, I'm allowed to emulate them. That is allowed. Uh, I'm actually not sure if that is allowed. But that's my defense, anyway. Um, <laughs> But I was playing the 3DS version the last day, and of course it looks like great. Uh, but there was really bad slowdown when I was trying to stream it. If I would just play it on its own, it played perfect. In fact, I was playing it on like three times native resolution, so it was like upscaled to nearly 1080p. It looked like really great. But once I would try to stream while it was on, uh, it, it would you get really bad lag, really bad slowdown. Um, and so. I'm playing the 64 version just because I figure it's so basic that it's not not basic really but you know the game file is not so big etc so it should run pretty well and um, but yeah I, d I downloaded a texture pack for it that is supposed to emulate the look of the uh, the 3ds version that's why it looks really good yeah. like that uh, in Hylian shield looks tremendous and um, you'll notice here the vines that I'm gonna climb up look different as well but yeah, it's modded. I am quite into modding games, actually. Um, maybe I'll play... After I beat Ocarina of Time, maybe what I'll do is I'll play uh, The Missing Link, which is a, a ROM hack of... I don't remember if it's a ROM hack of Ocarina of Time or of Majora's Mask, but it's a ROM hack that is uh, set between Ocarina and Majora, and it's, like, really good. Um, if, if, if you've never heard of it, I'd highly recommend um, like looking up on YouTube if you're interested. If you've played Majora, you've played Ocarina, and you're interested in it, look up maybe a, a YouTube playthrough of uh, The Missing Link. It's it's great, and I, I have played it. And in fact, I have uh, an EverDrive 64 over there. Oh, this lads after completely making me lose my orientation. I have an EverDrive 64 on it, and the reason I got the EverDrive 64 is I love these modded games. I love ROM hacks, and I was actually just looking into um, Super Nintendo ROM hacks the other day as well for like Mario World and Link to the Past. But you can play the ROM hacks on the EverDrive on an actual Nintendo 64, which is like... Oh, I don't remember which way I'm supposed to go here. I think I'm supposed to go... This way, I guess. Um, and that's just the best, like playing on an actual... on the actual hardware, on, the, on an actual TV is super cool. But yeah, Missing Link is, is really good. The people who made it... Um, I don't remember the guy's name now. Kaz... Oh, I don't remember. But like his his ROM hacks are really good. So let's kill this little MF right here. Job done. Yeah, I remember back in the day when I used to play this emulator, I used to... There's like cell shaded texture packs you can get for it. There's uh, like... That's not at all the right way. There are like HD texture packs. And uh, I love... I used to buy actually... Um, oh, that's not gonna work. I used to... Um, I used to buy Pro Evolution Soccer exclusively on PC to mod it. And this was before they brought in the modded option files on like consoles which they do now um and i ooh, i would mod them little bitches to hell and this is you know one thing that still annoys me about pro evolution soccer even though it plays a hundred times better than fifa is um even though you can mod the kits in and all that you can't mod in the proper uh like font for the numbers on the backs of the jerseys, which I know is like really, really a nitpick, but you know, I, I, I'm a nitpicker. I used to be the kind of person who would like play Pro Evolution Soccer back in the day, like F Pro Evo 4 and 5, where you would literally create your textures pixel by pixel, and I would do it for all 20 teams in the Premier League, 
put all the badges, all the logos, um, and I'd play for like 40 hours just doing that, and then I'd barely actually play the game. The game to me was modding everything into it, which is a mad thing to say. But uh, God, I loved it. And I was just modding uh, the Pro Evolution uh, 2021 last night. Uh, there is a website that I sign up to every year that they release periodically throughout the year. Uh, yeah, also that. Um, the, like all the jerseys and all that, so I was put on my PlayStation version there yesterday. Can you hear that audio crackling, Neil, by the way? I hope it's not too bad. It seems to be only whenever I'm playing the ocarina or whenever I'm in like a cutscene for whatever reason. Yeah, sorry about that. I know it's I know it's annoying, but I've it 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 I know it's annoying, but when I was playing this yesterday, it was constant. Now I've at least got it down to where it only happens a little bit. Okay, so that's the song we need for Goron C. So let's run all the way back. Bum, 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 bum. Were you watching um, Barry playing Super Mario Sunshine, Neil, by the way? Have you watched any of that? Ah, Bloodborne. I see. Having not played Bloodborne myself, I don't have any interest in watching him play Bloodborne. But uh, I just talk to this lad. Um, <laughs> because Joe and myself have both 100 percented uh, Sunshine in the last year. Um, watching Barry is both so funny, but also makes me want to tear my hair out. <laughs> But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I don't know anything about Bloodborne. I've never played Bloodborne, so... You know. I don't have the same... Uh, appeal. That doesn't have the same appeal for me. But watching him struggle with the... Sa the Sandbird, for example. Oh, like, oh, this is... This is, like, crack to me. But he's actually quite good at it. Better than... Uh, I thought he would be. I thought that game would eat him alive. But he's the kind of person who'll either uh, he'll either struggle on the easiest shine for an hour, or he'll do it like first time. I don't. I did not get 3D All Stars. I played the GameCube version, and not emulated. I played it on my Wii. So I did a snarky tweet around the time 3D All Stars came out, where I was like, "Huh, look, I picked up that new Mario game," and it was just a picture of my like 64 cartridge, my GameCube uh, copy of Sunshine, and my Wii copy of Galaxy. But no, I never, I never actually got 3D All Stars. I was always tempted to get it, but it really was one of those purchases where I'm like, I want to get it because I'm. I'm a big Nintendo fan, and to be fair, I think Sunshine looks really good in, like, Oprez and in widescreen. But I, like, I own those games, and I don't think Nintendo fundamentally updated them enough to really warrant me spending 60 Europeans on, on three games that I already own. So I, I ultimately had to keep the wall in the pocket on that one. Um, but no, I, I played the GameCube one... 100% completion and that is certainly a game that I will never play again <laughs> because it's not bad but it's uh, it's massively frustrating uh, especially how much of sunshine is just collecting coins uh, I don't really want to do that again and actually like the, the 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 levels that people consider the most difficult like the uh, the pachinko level and stuff like that. I didn't really have fun with those. I, I definitely struggled with the, there's one, uh, the watermelon festival, I think. I don't think Barry actually has to do that one, which really annoyed me when I saw him doing the uh, gelato beach level. 
I thought that Watermelon Festival was one of the first seven, and I, so I thought it would be like mandatory for him to do it, but it actually isn't. I think it might be the eighth shine on that level, so he skipped it, which annoyed me, because I was really wanting to see him struggle on that one. I did tell him now, even though I didn't struggle with it, I don't think Joe struggled with it, I did tell him to do the Pachinko level anyway, because again, it's, it's not a mandatory one for just beating the game. But, um... You know, it is what it is. No, and, and I think of the three in All-Stars, I think Galaxy is the only one that I've not 100%ed. I think I I thought that I did 100%ed, but I actually might not have. I th I've definitely 100%ed 64 more than once. I did it on emulator first, and then I felt bad that I had never 100%ed it on the 64, so I did that as well. Uh, and that was just last, that was just before Sunshine, just last year. Uh, playing it with a Nintendo 64 controller. I ran right into him. I ran right into him there. Uh, but there's no better feeling. Okay, I'm gonna take this Lon Lon milk that I was given to get some health back here. Um, but yeah, 64. I think 64 holds up. I know a lot of people really uh, dislike, you know, the camera, etc. In it. But um, as far as being like very, as far as very literally revolutionizing, like, 3D platforming, and for how early it was in the whole 3D shebang, I think it holds up really well. I think it holds up almost better than Ocarina of Time does. So going back and 100%ing that, like, new problem, baby. Because I absolutely adore that game. Uh, Sunshine, much more a problem. I have a lot of problems with Sunshine, actually. Um... First of all, there's not enough levels in it. Because <laughs> one thing I love about Mario games is a variety of levels. So, even though it's kind of a cliche at this point, you have your fire world, you have your water world, you have your desert world, da da da, right? Um, yeah, that's, that's true in like Odyssey 64, etc. In Sunshine, you have seven levels, and they're all like beach level, beach level, but at night, and there's a hotel, uh, harbour level, yeah, it's kind of like 7.9, too much water, you know what I mean, the levels all just kind of feel the same to me, in, in sunshine, and they reuse a lot of boss fights, and I love this dance he does, but I have a t-shirt with this, with his face on it, did he not do it, oh, I played the wrong song, Jesus Christ, okay, sorry everyone, I have a t-shirt with Darunia's... Do I have it around here, actually? Is it here? Is this it? It is. Okay. I'll show you now. I know my camera is a little bit small, but while this is happening... Look at that. Whoa, where's my camera? It's, oh, sorry, my camera's over here. A little Darunia there. And the, uh, the notes of the song. I know I've come way off mic, but... uh. There he is. Little head, little notes of the song. Jamming away to uh, Sari's song. I only got that very recently as well. And everyone that I've showed it to hates it. <laughs> I don't know, I like... I think they just think fundamentally it's like an ugly shirt. Which, you know... There he is with his little earphones on, right? Oh, wait, am I holding this? Sorry, I must have knocked on the mic. Uh, there. I think that's pretty... Jeez, oh, I, I can't figure out how I'm supposed to show this. There it is, there. Anyway. I like it. Everyone else hates it. Yeah, the only problem with this cheap-ass mic stand, as you might have heard there, is if I hit it, you get a th wong, 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 wong. Like, uh, I think Barry said on the podcast the last day, it was like someone hitting a tuning fork. Which is understandable. Give me the thing, for God's sake. I would love to go in. Give me your bracelet gimmick. And this is one thing I was saying earlier, Neil, that I hate about Ocarina 64 versus the 3DS version. Look how slow that text is going. Can you skip it? No! And even here, look. 
Okay, so we have our... Uh, okay, it's already, it's already equipped. Lovely. We have our Goron bracelet. It's gonna let us uh, knock this stuff down. It's so slow, and there's no way to speed it up. I was, I was actually gonna look into a mod for that, but I, I just didn't have time, ultimately. Uh, all right, let's open up this shortcut. There's a shortcut between Goron City and the old Lost Woods. You can hear there by the uh, by the tremendous music. go. Happy days. And now we're going to go all the way back to the top and go out to where I was going to do the backflip a second ago. And then we're going to do the, do the old cavern. Here we are now. We just passed an hour on stream as well. Oh my god. Okay, so we're gonna throw this. And then we're gonna hopefully. Oh, it didn't even. That's where I wanted to land. That's not where I wanted to bomb the land. So. Okay, but maybe since it's out of the way, I can do the. Uh... There we go. Hello. Get ourselves a little piece of heart before we're supposed to have gotten it. And that's our fourth one, so we have an extra little heart container, which is just great. Okay. I think it's funny that they give you the Goron bracelet so you can lift the bomb flowers and then you immediately just get bombs in the first dungeon anyway. Seems a bit pointless to me. I, w I would think it would it would probably would have been better to have bombs only as an adult when they you know they lock off some of the items for when you're a kid. I think that would have made maybe more sense. So, so yeah, that's where you're supposed to plant your magic bean to take you up to the top of the cavern to get the piece of art. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. Yeah, so it locks off bombs by virtue of you have to use bomb flowers. And then we just get bombs in like 20 minutes anyway. Why don't we just get bombs instead of bomb flowers? When we get the um, the bracelet. I don't know. That's just one of my little nitpicks about this game, I suppose. Listen. Don't jump in lava. Good advice. Guarantee you I will end up in the lava at some point uh, as we play this. Because being a Nintendo 64 game, uh, Ocarina of Time is still one that requires your jumps to be very... straight. Uh, but when you're playing, it's constantly at odds with you jumping in a straight line. It's con constantly wanting to turn you one direction or another. Uh, so that's a little bit annoying, but whatever. Kill that chap. Happy days. Run right into him exploding, as you do. Okay. Okay, we're good. We're doing well so far. We're doing well so far. Apart from that, the backtracking we had to do. Although anyone who's played uh, Skyward Sword lately would be used to endless backtracking. Yeah, in case you you don't know, I'm not the biggest Skyward Sword fan. And I haven't played the new one. I've only played the Wii one. And everything that people love about it, I don't like. <laughs> so I understand that I might well be 
on my own on an island with how I feel about Skyward Sword. But I hate the art style of it, which everyone says is a positive. Everyone's like, well, I love the art style. I think it sucks. I think it's an ugly game. Um, oh, but the story is so good. The story is trash. You basically follow, you chase Zelda around for 30 hours, and then she shows up and explains to you very quickly the story, and then you run around for 10 more hours. There's no story to it. Um, I actually don't mind the motion controls as well. Which is the part that everyone hates, I actually don't mind. It's everything else about the game that I hate. There's uh, no variety to the areas either, like... I, I appreciate what they try to do with the um, the dungeons extend to outside the dungeons, which is very cool. That, that I can see how that kind of led into the design for Breath of the Wild. And in fact, there's lots of stuff about the game that I can see how it, you know played into how Breath of the Wild ultimately turned out. But like one thing I said to somebody when I was arguing this point the other day, I was like, okay, think of the start of Ocarina of Time. And you might, well, first of all, you might say, well, it's not fair to compare it to Ocarina of Time, it's one of the best games of all time. But I think it is fair to compare it to Ocarina of Time. They're in the same, like, series. Like, there's no problem to have expectations that it would be as good as another game from years ago. Natty's coming in. Hello. No, I'm I'm streaming Ocarina of Time, and Woody is in here watching me play. Hi, Woody. How are you? Good. Natty's coming. I'm always winning. Ah, uh, Neil, Neil says hello. Hello. So what was I was just saying. Um, yeah, I was saying. Uh, think of sort of Ocarina of Time with uh, Kokiri Forest and uh, the Lost Woods and just how good the design of those areas is. Um, you have the little Skull Kid area, the little tutorial area, it's great. And then think of Far and Woods and Sky Resort. It's just kind of a wood area. It's a generic wood area where there's nothing unique or interesting. So yeah, I'll stop talking about that anyway. It's getting me annoyed. Let's concentrate on beating this, beating this dungeon. I thought it was only three hits. Four. Okay, four. No piece of heart or nothing. Or not piece of heart, but, you know, heart. <laughs> but one of them does the job for some reason. Okay, so I need to get the old deco sticks out here, I think. And there must be a flame back here. Yeah. Right, let's do this. Boom. already here. Lovely. Don't think there's anything in here, but I'm gonna grab it anyway. Did I miss anything on the other side? Oh, I did as well. Oh, what? Yeah. Hi. 
a dungeon map. But I think there's something I missed over there, but I don't think it's super important, so I'm not going to go back for it now. No, Mario 64 is not hard to control. It's easy to control. You're just bad at games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were you a PlayStation kid? Were you? PlayStation, he was shite. Snares and play for sure. Oh, I need to get these bombs, of course, don't I? Yeah, I never owned a PlayStation, I hated the PlayStation. I was a PlayStation Philistine. Keeps looking in at me. <laughs> but like, I assume, maybe wrongly, Neil, but I assume you've gone back and played most of the the greats, right? Like, surely you've beaten Mario 64, no? Surely, surely you've beaten Mario 64, Neil. Oh, I don't know if that's a good one. No, no good, no good. I'm sure you played like Ocarina of Time, right? Majora's Mask. Nah, that, that, that one should do. Yeah. You don't know if you have, Neil. What's wrong with you? What do you mean you don't know? Do you know? Oh my God. You've never played. Like, okay, well you're experiencing with me, if nothing else. Yeah. I what I'd say, Neil, is if you're gonna play Ocarina or and Majora, if you're gonna play one, you gotta play both of them. Play the 3DS version of Ocarina. Absolutely. The 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 negatives outweigh the positives. Yeah, but play the 3DS version. Don't play the 64 version like me, like a goddamn rube. Um, the 3DS version is far superior. Now, what I'll say though is. While the Ocarina of Time 3DS version is the superior one, uh, not the case with Majora's Mask. And they made some really weird design choice with Majora's Mask that actually the game's worse for it. Um, but one thing that I miss uh, from playing the 3DS one is like gyroscopic controls. Is is the way of the future, folks. The the aiming in these games has never been good. Whereas once you have suddenly the gyroscope on the go, your Olympic shooting levels of good, you know. Is that going to jump at me, or can I push it out of the way? Okay. Yeah, I don't know where my 3ds is. Uh, I've been looking for it for the last few days. I have a special edition 3ds xl i have the uh the yoshi one so it's a green one with like yoshi on the front and egg designs on the back i don't know where it is but it's around uh, and i also own like i said uh ocarina of time and majora's mask on 3ds ocarina of time uh one of natty's uh cousins has it so i actually don't have it with me at the moment And also, an option, which I don't know, Neil, how you are for owning systems that maybe four people owned, but, um, oh wait, I'm not supposed to be pushing this out of the way, what am I doing? I need to climb on that to get up the ladder. Um, I have them both on the, the Wii U store as well. So that's also an option, if you have a Wii U lying around, for whatever reason. Oh, this is a pain in the arse, this bit. Alright, I made that jump pretty well, though. That was, uh... Flukely impressive. That's because I need to land this on the lip here. Oh. Christ, why did they make this this way? Well, I, don't, I don't need to land it on the li lip, but I need to time it well so it explodes as it hits the wall. 
Oh, I'm so close. Yeah. Wii U is good for play for getting 64 games. I'll say that much. Because um, I was saying on, on the start of this stream, playing 64 games on the actual 64 hardware with a HD TV is a bit of a uh, it's a bit of a pain because the especially games that are very text heavy, um, they do not look great on modern TVs. But if you play it through the Wii U, it looks great. For whatever reason. So. I played Paper Mario recently on the, uh, on the Wii U. And that's another game, by the way, if you've never played. Oh. Chef's Kiss. The original Paper Mario. It's like, um... I would say, like, control-wise and, and everything, it's very similar to, um, the first South Park RPG that they put out, if you played that, the, uh, Stick of Truth. Paper Mario is very like that, so if you enjoyed that, you'd enjoy, uh, Paper Mario. But, of course, the better Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door, was only ever released on GameCube, which, again, me and six other people own. That game is so effing good. Oh, you hate the, the combat. I mean, yeah. It's uh, it's an acquired taste. I generally don't like that kind of combat. I'm very, um, very much not a fan of your Japanese RPGs in the world. Um, I think I can only really take turn-based combat if it's like uh, Pokemon, which I'm pretty much on my last legs with that anyway, and Paper Mario South Park, those kind of games where it's 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 uh, turn-based, but there's a little bit of, you know, extra actions you do to like, you, you tap A on the bounce to get the, uh, the extra damage or whatever. I think that makes it a bit more interesting than just select your magic, do the magic attack. Like, you know, your Final Fantasies of the world. I've, the only Final Fantasy I ever played was 7 Remake. And that's because even they dumbed down the uh, turn-based aspect of that as well. Make it a bit easier to play. What am I supposed to do here? Do I just jump straight across? Oh yeah, here's my bombs. Okay, that's where you get the bombs. And I actually didn't mind. I, I liked... Um, I liked Stick of Truth quite a bit. I liked it more than Fractured But Hole. But they're both great. Okay, so now we have bombs. Now we don't even need the bracelet that we just got five minutes ago. Completely pointless. Is there anything else in here for us to get? No, it's the same room we were just in. Okay. There's a little shortcut ski now. Oh, that's interesting. They changed the texture on this in the texture pack I have. This is the famous uh, Luigi da 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 texture in the original game. But here it's like Japanese text for whatever reason. Fair enough. Yeah, I know. I'm not going back down there, so don't worry. You dumb fairy. Oh, that was terrible. That's a bit better. Yes, okay. A little bit better there. No, I think I need to jump across. Do it from here. Yes, okay. Perfect. Perfect. I like these early dungeons a lot in this game. I think they're fundamentally very clever, but also not too big, not too sprawling. But they do a really good job of teaching you what's to come later, later in the game. Okay, so let me think here. What are we supposed to do? 
Ah, you stupid game. The lock on is a bit fiddly in this one, to be fair. Okay, forget. Okay, we're near the boss. We're near the boss. What are we? Almost an hour and a half. I was actually thinking today I was going to do this. Uh, this level and the next one in like an hour. <laughs> no. This one's taking me a lot longer than I thought it would be to beat. Is there something there for me to get? I do not remember. Sure, come on, let's see what's in here. Yeah, I'm trying not to swear on stream. Neil, you might have noticed. I very almost said dickhead just now. Now I have. Oh, it's just a sculpture. Christ. Why did I throw? I meant to drop it. The textures on those actually look really good too. Just a sculpture there, that's fine. How many do I have now of those? Ten. Okay, so after I beat the dungeon, I'll go back down to the village and get my my reward for getting ten of those. Ah, you've respawned you little dirtbag. There. This guy's gonna knock me off here, I can feel it. Feeling my bones. No, it's okay. Is this the one I pull, or is there one up here? No, there's one around the corner here, surely. We're not doing well in the hearts. We need uh, two more. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I was saying earlier as well, Neil, I have a uh, guidebook for this game, right? There's going to be a little bit of boasting, but sure, screw it, I can boast. Um, I have a guidebook for this game, uh, Collector's Edition, and I've seen it go on Amazon for... What was the most I saw it go for? I don't know, maybe $700? Something like that. So if ever... I'm in sudden need of some Spondulix. I'll be straight onto the old eBay. I have another guide as well for the original NES Zelda hand-drawn guide uh, by a guy called Phil Summers. And I saw that going on eBay for a hundred euro just yesterday. So I have a, a few little uh, knickknacks that I can sell if I need to. All right, here's the boss of the dungeon. These textures don't look too great, to be honest. Uh, maybe they didn't do him in the texture pack. I could. I'm actually thinking more of... Uh, his texture looks okay, actually. I'm thinking more of getting an Xbox Series S than a PS5, to be honest. Um, the brother got a PS5 just the other day. But, I'll tell you why, that uh, that Game Pass deal is too good to turn up. That Game Pass deal is too good. And also, as someone, as you can see, someone who clearly enjoys a uh, playing an old game. I, I know it won't age well, but uh, they'll probably bring out like a pro version in three or four years anyway, so... I'm, I, I don't have a 4K TV, you know, etc. So I'm. Uh, hit with a sword now. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I know I, the X now, but like I don't have a 4K TV now anyway. Um, so I feel like if I got a PS5 or a Xbox Series X, I'd be spending 200 euro or more and really not reaping any of the rewards for it. So I, you know, give me an S, play the latest releases, um, save 200 euro. Yeah, I mean, there's games that I want to play, but I, I don't have a 4K TV. I, my TV doesn't have HDR. Like, I really wouldn't... Uh, there's no... Even though I want the X, and obviously I have, um, you know... Material want for the X, because it's the biggest, best, shiniest version. There's no point for me to have the X. It would, it would just be a waste of money. Um, whereas... Get the S now. That'll do me for you know three years, four years, and then by then, if I have a 4K TV, HDR, ready TV, then I can have it. You know. Um, but I think the S for now will do. And like I said, as someone who obviously enjoys playing old games, PlayStation are so bad for any kind of backwards compatibility or. You know, I have PS3 games that I'd love to replay. Well, you have to hook up the PS3 again, play them on that. Like, fair enough, PS4 or 5 is backwards compatible, but, like, I have a PS4 Pro anyway. I'm not really rushing to get a PS5, given that every game that's coming out for the next two years is going to be on PS4 anyway. Xbox, I can at least play the Xbox. Well, here's the secret, Woody. I will love Ratchet & Clank. My brother got the PS5. And it's his birthday next week. And actually... There it is there. And while he's away on his holidays next week, I'm gonna play that mother. So I will play Ratchet & Clank next week. On a console that I don't own. <laughs> Because he's he just got it yesterday, and I got him that for his birthday. Yeah, and he's going away for like four days, so I'm gonna be playing that mother. Oh, did I say the F word a second ago? I don't remember if I did or not. But anyway, yeah. But like, I don't know. I feel like having the PS4, I'm going to be able to play Horizon. You know, I'm going to be able to play the majority of games that are coming out. I I just use it today for the first time. Yeah, it's crazy. It's really good. And Xbox controllers still take batteries. Like, why is there such a like difference in technology between the two controllers? Um, I just played the demo on the controller demo on the Astrobot game, whatever that's called. Uh, and it, yeah, just to show you like the haptic feedback, the motion control, da da da. So I, wasn't really, I didn't really play any of the actual game. I just did the demo. But apparently you can like um, platinum that game in four or five hours. So I'll do that while he's away as well. Yeah. So I'll, I maybe I'll have like three, four days with it. So I'll play that, and I'll play Ratchet Clank. Ah! And I look forward to it. But yeah, my TV is from like I want to say twenty eleven. I have a very old TV. I'll be it. For the old 1080p non-smart TV tasks, it does the job, you know. But it's it's getting a little old. It's not sm it's not a smart TV. It's only 1080p. There's no HDR, etc., etc., etc. So you know, I'm a little bit behind. I don't remember your PS5 TV story. No. So 
So this boy should give me a wallet, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So now I can hold. Is it 200? Yeah. I can hold double the rupees now. Happy days. So next we're going to Zora's domain. So what I'll do is I'll just get to Zora's domain and then we'll leave it there for today. I'll like just go into Zora's domain and I'll stop and leave it there. Oh no. You got a PS5 for 24 euro and then bought a TV with... Okay, but what happened then? Where's the butt in this story? They hardly let you get away with that, did they? Twenty for dollars, did I say euros? Well, euros and dollars are not a million a million miles apart, are they? They're basically worth the same. They're both worth less than the great British pound. There's this owl again! He's everywhere! Uh, he's like the only character, though, in the game that you can skip their text. That's some of it. Ah, come on, that should have hit it there, no? Why are these not blowing up? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it'll not be a weekend, it'll be a week. What is going on? There we go. Um, it'll be like during the week, so it'll be after work I'll have to play it. I'm also getting my second jab on Tuesday. Of the old vaccine. Be fized up from the eyes up, baby. Came up with that myself. I'm gonna skip the frogs there. I'm not gonna do the frogs in the mini game now. Let me come back to that later. There's also a shortcut here that gets you also to the Lost Woods. Oh, hang on a second. What's that piece of heart doing there? Can I get that? Surely I can, no? I don't know if I can make that jump, though. Here we go for it. Ah, I just missed. Okay. Can't get that yet. Here we are, Zora's Domain. So that's where we're gonna leave it for today. I'll go get my dinner, because I'm a hungry boy. Yeah. Let the music play. So that's it for today. Link's having a yawn there. You can still hear him. Pause the gameplay audio, maybe. Can I do that? I don't know. Anyway, it's fine. We'll leave it. I'll show you the better, better quality. There it is there. 
the famous t-shirt. Right, I'll shake this up on YouTube in a bit. And uh, next day, with no notice, there's no schedule. Whenever I feel like playing, I'll throw up on Twitter. We're playing! I'll create a time, come watch. And that'll be it. Radio, so that's it for today. Goodbye.